Hello, this is Mike Lyman from Northern Kentucky University, and today we're going to show you how to make a Flash CS4 planetarium in just 49 lines of code. Now, if you're just tuning in from YouTube, this is coming from my book blog, professionalpapervision.wordpress.com. And uh, I had actually originally done this for Chapter 7 of the book on a planetarium uh, example I'd done or previous in this blog that was made of Cairngorm. And we threw Cairngorm out, and we just used XML because we wanted to sh demonstrate that in the book. And I thought, you know, heck, I can do this in CS4. And it was pretty easy to do. And I'm going to show you how it was done uh, in 49 lines of code. But first, let's take a look at the demo. And, of course, there's not enough room to see it all. But you can see here's the demo of the uh, planetarium. And we're just going to scroll down here so you can see the whole thing. Wall scrolling. 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 So there you go. And it's not a lot more fancy than that, but at least this gives you the base codes. You can go ahead and do a lot more th things with this. Um, but it does show how to essentially bring in that XML and use that real star data to produce a planetarium. All right, let's talk about how it was made. There are essentially two essential steps in making this happen. And one is go ahead and create a star object and put it in your library. And you're going to instantiate that as a star. So now, in paper vision, you got a huge amount of code to do this, and it's all generated mathematically. But here you just throw a symbol in the library, and you basically uh, instantiate it, and uh, give the light, right export uh, criteria, and you're ready to rock and roll. And that instantiation code is right here, var my star equals new star, and you can instantiate as many as you want, and create your entire uh, star system just from one library sy system. The next thing you want to do is you want to treat your stars as a particle system. So you want to stuff them all into a particle array, so you can update that ray, array, and uh, basically uh, turn and move your starter particles around the screen. Uh, just take a look at some star data, what typical star data looks like uh, below here. Uh, here we have sample star data and you got the acronym for the star, the coordinate data 1, 2, and then the star brightness. And so you can see each star has four sets of data. So we have to keep that in mind because we're building a parser and we'll parse it in terms of four. So let's go ahead and take a look at the code real quick here. So you have your import statements of course and here's your uh, planetarium code and uh, your import statements and then you have your basically you're declaring your star your sky radius which you can change your oscillation count so basically when you want the uh, whole thing to oscillate with time so you're basically going to update an oscillation parameters and you have star holder and the star holder saves you a lot because you throw all your stars in the star holder then you can move the ho star holder anywhere you want on the stage and position your stars where you want them to go the next thing you have is a star array, and that's where you're going to throw all your comma-separated value data. And as you can see, all the star data is separated by commas. So you can basically break that up and throw it into an array. And the next array, of course, is that particle array that you can stuff all your stars into that you can update. Now, the next thing you don't want to do is get into the nitty-gritty. You want to bring this all in as an XML, because this is an XML uh, sheet. And so you use your URL request. That basically points to your URL. And the URL lo loader, which loads that URL. And then when it's complete, you go right into the parser, which is the read XML function. Come down here to the read XML method. And you're going to split all that star data okay, up and stuff it into the individual array. And once in the array, you can start parsing over it in terms of four. So if you go every four, you can come down here and actually push those stars into your array, add those stars to your holder, and then start positioning those stars on stage. Once again, keeping track of that times four plus one, times four plus one math, and basically, this is based just uh, a cosine times sine and a sine times sine and a sine. Basically, that 3D uh, mathematics that we talked about in previous posts. Uh, finally, you want to scale your star accordingly with the uh, star data array. That's 4 star i plus 2. That's the third value. Actually, the fourth value. Remember, arrays start at 0, 1, 2, 3. So that's the fourth value. That's your star data, your brightness data. And finally, you want to throw the stars out at a random rotation. You don't want them all facing the same. They'll look weird. So that's pretty well all that there is to getting all that started on the on the stage then you add your holder to the stage and then you position it and finally what you want to do the final step here is add a listener on an inner frame and in that on inner frame you want to iterate over your particles so you stuff them all into the race so you're iterating over J here and you basically recalculate their position as you add in a rotation so here you, you can see it right here but you're actually adding in a rotation it's not showing and as that rotation increments, it uh, actually increments the position of your star. Pretty easy. That's all there was to it. 49 lines of code. Uh, let's take a look at it one more time. There it is.
it is. Hey, I love it when it's this easy. And that's all thanks to CS4. Well, this was Mike Live from Northern Kentucky University. I hope you enjoyed this uh, tutorial, and I hope you get something out of it.